Want to do some sewing done? You want to sew? Is that what you want to do? You want to play with your fabric? Fabric? No? Say hi, everybody. Say hi. I'm Thumper. Today is so Sunday. Yeah? No? Okay. You've had your two seconds of fame. <laughs> hi, everyone. Tiffany here. Today is Sunday. So Sunday. Where I inspire you to sew on a Sunday. Today is 9 11. 2022 and if you didn't already go out and hug a first responder because today's 9 11 and those first responders saved many of lives so uh today i really have nothing specific as the title says i have a box of scraps that is now just you know laying all over the desk but this was my shoe box of scraps that held these scraps that are all coordinating, coordinating scraps. And there's still stuff in here. I haven't pulled it all out, but I figured since the last time you guys, you guys saw me playing with these scraps, I was making sawtooth stars and sawtooth stars with a variation in the middle. Cause like you could do so many things with these. So I was making little six and a half inch blocks that'll finish at six inches. I figured, well, I haven't seen this project in a while. I might as well pull it out and do something with it for a little while. So that's what I'm going to do today. I do have tons of uh, little four patches, you know, that I've been working on little by little and a whole stack of, you know, all sorts of stuff that I've been working on. But little by little, I'm building something out of this and it's been sitting over here under the ironing board. And I said, well, you know what, when I don't know what to do, I always pull out some kind of scrappy project that I can, you know, continue working on here and there. Anyways, let's see who is all here. We've got Joyce, Linda, Sheila, Rich, Kim, uh, Elena, Mary, uh, Shauna, Tracy, Lori, Shirley, Eva, King James, Shirley, Jeffrey Quilter, uh, Donna, Paula, Maggie, scrolling, Janice, Joe, uh, Karen, Glenny, Robin, Dar, Sandra, Janet, Fern, Ellen is here, Nadine, MJ, Judith, Beverly, Mary, Carol, Irish, Say Lady, Sandra, whoop, just scrolled again, Mary Lou, Kathleen, Nancy, Sheila, Patricia, Patty, and lots, lots more. Wow, it's just a scrolling like a crazy now. Anyways, so welcome everybody. If I didn't catch your name, welcome. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm going to do today is just work on this. I decided that I'm going to make a Dutchman's puzzle block to go in this. So I won't only just have these star blocks, but I think I'm going to add Dutchman's puzzle block. Um, if you don't know what that is, I guess I'll show you. I'm not 100% sure on the measurements because I am using scraps, but I think my flying geese units need to be three and a half by one and three quarter inch because I think that's what they need to be because I think so. I'm thinking. I'm a thinking. It's a it's a block that uses one, two, three, eight flying geese units situated in a way where they kind of make a pinwheel in the middle. So I have this yeah. scrap in here. Really? I know. Let's fix that. Let's fix that up. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. That's why I opened it up on this. So here I have some more scrap fabric that kind of goes with the line to me. I think it does. So I added it to this stash pile of scraps. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut um, 
oh, let's see, if it's three and a half and one and three quarter, I need, I'm thinking, one and three quarter inch strips off of this as well. I think so. No, I need two inch strips. No, I need one and three quarter. We're going to see right now. Is there a mat that I can help you? you tell me? No. You know, I really, really suck at math. You know, I really do. But sometimes I just figure it out. And if it doesn't work the first time, I'll just do it again. And it doesn't matter because I'm playing with scraps. So my background pieces, I want the main part of the flying geese unit to be my scraps. And then I want the, uh, whatchamacallit's around it, the triangles that create a flying geese unit right here to be my background. So I'm going to cut a strip that's two inches. And if it's not right, because I want it to hang over. No, because one and three quarters should be good. What's one and three quarters and one and three quarters? That's four, right? No, one and three quarters. That's three and a half. Yeah, okay. We're going to do one and three quarters then. Because that way I, ha I want to have a uh, quarter inch seam at the top of my flying geese units. I'm cutting through a lot of layers right here. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. I will. I mean, I make enough quilts to figure things out on my own, I suppose. All right, so I'm just going to cut these into squares that are one and three quarters. And then I'm going to cut some one and three quarter by three and a half inch pieces. For my other pieces because I want my blocks to finish at six inches. So that's my goal. That's my goal. One and three quarters. So there's a whole stack. There's a whole stack. And we'll cut four stacks for now just so that I and make sure that these are the sizes that I want them to be. All right, let's find some scraps and make them one and three quarters by, oh, that's definitely not one and three quarters. We'll find some different scraps. What is this guy? And this guy. Definitely got to be one and three quarters here. Let's see. That's a straight edge on that side. So yeah, I figured I'd make these Dutchman puzzle blocks to go with my star blocks. And then when I make enough of those, I'll decide I want to make a different block to go with my blocks. And in the end, I will have a very um, sampler type quilt. Three and a half. Am I going to get two three and a half inch pieces from this? Oh, let's see. Hopefully. Is it? It's just shy of three and a half, literally. I'll just stick that over there. Yeah, three and a half, right here. And we're just going to be snowballing these on to the corners. All right, so I need a different color. That's definitely not enough there. I have two of that color. Let's do two of this color. Maybe. Maybe not. No, no. Definitely not. Let's just go to pink. All right. Make a nice straight cut. Hopefully everybody is uh doing good today. So you would go underneath, there's a little spinny thing. If you're on a computer and or a cell phone, if you're on a cell phone, tap the screen and the top right corner, it's a little circle. What is that called? A bolt? A nut? No, it's a nut now. You hit that and that is the settings thing. And you go to playback speed and you hit the button that says two times. That way it'll catch it all the way up and then it'll catch the video up to where I am currently at this moment with a 20-ish second delay. 
you can do that with any video, but if you do it with a, you're playing, doing that on a replay, then you will listen to it fast forward the whole time and you're going to be like that the whole time. <laughs> no, I mean, just like Oh, the 1080p is under that same exact thing. It's under quality. It's blurry. Yeah, it's under quality and you would change that to auto so it automatically would be where so it needs to, to go. To always make the, the tablet a lower one because it was always too high. Yeah, I always keep it on auto for any videos that I watch. They can change the, I don't know what the quality, the speed, whatever. Yeah. I forget what it was called. Yeah, it's the quality. You could change the speed, though, if you think you're behind in the video or someone tells you in the chat that you're behind, that's because you need to change the speed and catch it up. And it's the same little bolt looking thing, which is the settings on um, on a computer as it is on a cell phone or a tablet. You just have to tap the screen on cell phones and tablets. So I'm making four sets of two. So that way I can have two of each color in my. I thought on a tablet you still could. No, it's not anymore. They changed it. Okay. I didn't know. Unless you're on an old tablet, then it might be. But the new updated version is actually. It's kind of hard to hear it new except for your cell phone. My computer? Yeah. Okay, and your computer. I'm sorry. The computer I'm using is old. Three and a half. Now I need one more color. Let's do this blue because it's pretty. And then we're going to snowball the corner. Need a nice straight edge right here. And go one and three quarters. And I'm making more scraps from the scraps. You ever notice that? You start making something with scraps and you're actually making way more scraps. <gasps> oh, it's funny. Funny how that works. So my first attempt is seeing if the one and three quarters by three and a half inch work with my one and three quarter inch snowballed pieces. So I'm just going to take these over here and all these and I am going to attach on the diagonal my pieces. So I'm just going to slide them in and go from corner to corner using my, oh yeah, see this is exactly three and a half not going to work that way. Hmm. We're just going to do it and they're not going to have points. How about that? <laughs> they're going to be pointless. <laughs> pointless. <laughs> they're going to be pointless. These are going to be pointless pieces. So that first number, it don't work. You need it to be a different one. But that's okay. I'm still going to sew them on because Again, I'm just screwing around and it's a scrap project, so it's not going to matter. And I could probably make a ton just like this. Who cares what it looks like? It's just pointless. Let's get it. <laughs> yes. Wasn't that funny? Second time around, he's going to beat yeah. the dead horse on that. Yeah. Welcome everybody that's joining in. Yeah, I should have knew that wasn't gonna work. Because one and three quarters and one and three quarters is three and a half. So I should have knew that. I should have should have knew it. This is the best to begin with. I needed it to be like four. Then that would have been confusing. Yeah, which would have made no sense because these would have been oversized. But that's okay. Why? Because it's okay. But I'm still going to sew them in the flying geese formation. <laughs> or I could make a totally different block with just these edges. Ooh, I could make totally different blocks. But anyway, just going to finger press these back. 
So I have a piece that looks like this, and I'm going to add the other side, and I won't have a corner, you know. And then we'll go through and cut all the pieces off. Robin wants me to show you that beauty quilt. Can't wait yeah. to see that. It'll be a pretty quilt. It's just going to be super colorful with some, you know, weird blocks. <laughs> but that's okay. I will have learned my lesson, and we're going to do it the other way of making flying geese. Because I do have some scraps that are bigger. So we're going to do like a four at a time flying geese or something. That means I have to trim them all down. Ugh. Okay. I shall make it work. After I sew these on, I'm going to go ahead and trim away my excess on both sides of my not so flying geese flying geese unit. <laughs> Let's get the small ruler for this. Turn it right off the other side. And then I'm just going to finger press them back because I'm going to put them together without ironing them at first. So I have a, a unit that looks like this without having it crossing over. We really wanted it to cross over. That's the whole point. But we're going to do it a different way. Why does it cam? Do quilts with words? Quilts with words? No. Like making a quilt and embroidering a ton of words on it. That I have. Done. I've done that. You've also quilted words. On I've also it. quilted words into um, a quilt on the long arm. But I've never made alphabetical letters with my fabric. Unless you count my little Tiffany's Quilting Life thing made with scraps. Yeah, that's made with, there you go. So you have done it once. Yeah, that's different though. They're probably talking about piecing fabric with letter, making letters out of your piece of fabric. I totally could though, if I wanted to. I don't think it would be too hard to make some alphabet letters. Just drop, you know, on a grid, like a fabric grid, like a grid, grid graph paper. That's the word. Just drop on some graph paper the letters in, in square form, you know, and then color in to create the letter. And yeah, you'll know which ones need to be half square triangles and which ones need to be not half square triangles and solid blocks. And yes, I save my little pieces. Why? Because I can sew them together and get little tiny itty bitty blocks that are like this. See, I save it all. No waste. No waste. I am a no waste quilter. So if you are new to my channel and didn't know that, now you know. <laughs> what am I gonna do with all the little pieces? make a small miniature project because I like making many miniature quilts minis and two more and then I'm going to sew them together and then we're going to move on because I definitely need to do a bigger piece and I don't know the math offhand for the four at a time flying geese method but we're going to pretend I do, and if it's oversized, then, then it's oversized. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just having some fun here. And all of these blocks, as long as they turn out um, six and a half inches unfinished, that's all that matters. All right. 
So if these pieces were accurate, this is how a Dutchman's puzzle is laid out. definitely oversized. I could have cut different size because once those are together, it's these are bigger. Yep. That's what's going to happen. Oops. Those go outward like that. Yep. Because I'm going to lose my seam here. Yep. Yep. So one yep, side yep. or the other <laughs> has to come off. What side is going to come off? You might ask. I don't know. Like We're just going to. Yep. Yep. Sew them together because this is totally the wrong size. So I'm going to have a really weird block here. I'm just sewing them in sets of two. Totally the wrong size. They needed to be like, no, because three inches wouldn't have given me a six and a half inch square block. So back to the drawing board. And one. And I don't have to worry about losing any points because they already lost them building my block. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna build it right up here because it's oh that well it looks kind of cool actually. I do have to figure out what end I want to cut off unless I cut off just a little bit from both. It's like little trees. I'm not testing my fingertips towards that side. All right. This is definitely not going to be the size I want it to be. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take the an eighth of an inch off of both sides. It's a new pattern design. Yeah, an eighth of an inch off both sides of every single piece, then they should be, yep, close enough. Close to no cookie, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. Totally messed up this, but I'm still making something. I don't think it's going to be the size I need it to be, though, in the end. So it'll probably just get scrapped. That's okay. Yeah, see, I didn't take off enough. Still going to do it. Still doing it. Still trapping it up. That's the other side. This is definitely a no point block. Like I'm losing all of the points. What projects are coming for the holidays? Uh, holidays are probably going to be little kits of stuff that I have. I really don't do much holiday stuff. I did just make a trivet that's fall themed in my open gates box video, my open gate unboxing video. It's kind of big. Yep, I guess. So starting this Wednesday, I'm hoping this Wednesday, um, is going to be the start of a new sew along that we will be doing here on my channel. So starting this Wednesday, and it's, you know, it's been a while since I ended the 25 patch blocks. They did come out on um, Wednesdays, but now something new is going to take over on Wednesdays for a while. You guys will love it. I definitely know I'm going to love it because I already know it advance. I can't tell you because then it gives away too many secrets. Too many secrets. So I'm not telling you guys yet. But you'll know so we on know fact, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know if it's this Wednesday or next Wednesday because I am trying to catch up. If you guys didn't know, I also do start to finish jobs. So I actually make quilts for other people. Um, start to finish. And a lot of that, some of it I do on camera, some of it I do off camera. And lately a lot of it's been off camera. And so I have a lot of that stuff to get situated before I do any of my own stuff so along wise, you know. Yeah, this is a totally messed up block. I'm glad I didn't pre-cut a ton of stuff. Okay. So 
So I'm just going to put this funky block together anyway. It's so messed up. <laughs> what are they showing me? It's going to be right here in videos on my channel. It will not be live stream videos. They will be pre-record videos. It's something that can't really be done live stream, unfortunately, because it's going to take a while to do. All right, here is my funky messed up block. Hi, mom. But this is the general idea of the Dutchman's puzzle. <laughs> but this is a little messed up. I lost all points and I obviously did not do it correctly. It looks good. So that is just me. Testa black. Me what size, testa. What size is that? Oh, it's definitely not the size I need it to be. It okay. is only five and three quarters because <laughs> I had to cut off so much mess up. All right. Let's make a block, the same kind of block. The four at a time flying geese way. What Let's see. Can they make ahead of time for the uh, there's nothing to make ahead of time because you'll you'll know Wednesday, this Wednesday or next Wednesday. Okay, you just trust me. Well, you're gonna make a video to announce. It. Yeah, I'm gonna be making a video that announces it. So. If it's not gonna start immediately. Nope, it does not start immediately. Alrighty, do I have any pieces that are this big? Sure, why not? This is probably going to be overkill on size, but how big is this? It's going to be what? An introduction Five video, and a half inches. Right? Yes, an introduction video. Okay. Almost five and a half. Let's go with that. One, two, three, four, five and a half. It's definitely not five and a half, but we're going to do it. It'll be Wednesday morning, right? Yeah, it'll be Wednesday morning. I'm going to go screw it down to five inches. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I cut that at six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, let's cut one inch off of it. Cut one inch off. I'm just playing around here. All right. If anything, you'll learn how to do the four at a time flying geese. So I'm going to start with a five inch square. And then we're going to take this guy. No, I want background fabric. And we're going to cut three inch strip off of it. Five, three, half. Yeah, three inch strip off of here. Come on. One little. Piece. All right, so let's cut one, two, three, four, three inch squares off of this. Did your daughter get moved okay? Yes, she got moved okay. Right now she's in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. She didn't know where that was. Doing she's Comic doing a Comic Con y thing. I always say Comic Con y thing because it's not really Comic Con, the actual Comic Con. It's a different, it's her cosplay at the same time which is all it's what comic con is so but it's a con, con yeah but it's a different one than comic con it's just a different convention. all right what i'm gonna do is my three inch squares and my five inch squares i'm gonna take two of these and i'm gonna cross them over this is gonna be oversized for a purpose because i don't know what size it really needs to be and i'm definitely gonna have a nice hangover we're gonna take two three inch squares and put them on opposite sides and normally someone would draw a line. I have a seam tape on my machine, so I'm not gonna draw a line, but I pretend there's a line there and I'm gonna sew on each side of that line. So I'm on a five inch square with four three inch squares. We're gonna make this work. We're gonna see why I'm not sewing with any thread. <laughs> Air sewing. Air sewing. Did I run out of bobbin? Yeah, that's why. Air sewing knocked the thread because I ran out of bobbin.
Let's try that again. So let's thread the needle first. It's rare that I air so, but sometimes it happens. And today is one of those th days that, you know, Murphy's Law. It's going to happen and go wrong. All right, one side of my pretendly drawn line, and now the other side of my pretendly drawn line. And if you guys have never seen this method before, this is a good method. There's charts on the internet for on the internet on the internet of the four at a time flying geese method. This can be done. It actually gives you the proper measurements, but I don't have proper measurements. Now I cut on my drawn line that I don't really have. And I'm going to finger press these back. I'll be very careful because it is bias. And now I'm going to have two hearts. Is this is a my Juki is a domestic machine that just so happens to sew through lots of layers. It is semi industrial is what the term used for the Juki is. But no, it's not an industrial machine. Someday in the future, I will have one. All right, now I'm gonna take my other three inch squares and one is gonna go with one heart and the other is gonna go with the other heart. And I'm going to lay it on the only opposite corner that you can. So if you have a heart, you lay it on the other corner right here. And if you have a drawn line, you're looking for a drawn line from corner to corner. And you want your drawn line going in between the center of the heart. And then we're gonna sew on each side of that drawn line. Of course, I didn't draw a line, but you know, we're gonna pretend I did. All right. So I'm just gonna chain piece these through, flip it around. And now I have just made four flying geese at the same exact time. Hence the name four to time flying geese. So now I'm just gonna cut on my drawn line on both these pieces. If you guys have never seen this method, it's actually a really good method. And I gave myself plenty size with these. Woo wee, these large and in charge. But I didn't know what size I really needed to start with. So I don't think I'm gonna do this method though. I think I'm going to open my book and find a six and a half inch flying geese <laughs> thing. <laughs> Anyways, so here's my four flying geese, which can be trimmed to the size they need to be. And these are super large. So I guess I can just leave these in my stack of stuff and make them later because these are way too big to trim down. These came out two and a half inches. So these can be saved for further into my scrappiness. Need a book. Need a book. Let's see, is there a Dutchman's puzzle in this book? Hey Tucker, I'm glad you can quilt again. That is awesome. And I also saw the little short of you quilting over at Becca's house on her Monica quilt, tacking it down. It's a flying geese. I'm not seeing one in here. No, no, no. It's nice to have these books of blocks. Definitely um, great to have these kind of books, especially if you like to like make things up as you go and make samplers. This gives you all the measurements. This one does not have a Dutchman's puzzle. This is around the block with Judy Hopkins. Right. Uh, the videos will be there, so whether they can order it at any time and start video one at any time. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Uh, I want to 
in the book, and there was no book in this block. Oh, this one's called Around the Block with Judy Hopkins. It's got 200 rotary cut, cut blocks in six sizes. That's one of my books. And the MSRP is $21.95 on it, but I'm pretty sure you can find this like on Amazon or bookstores or whatever. But it comes with big color illustrations of the blocks, and then it, it'll tell you what page number it's on. So then you would go to said page and say you wanted the Fool's Puzzle block, which I've done actually before on a video before. If you wanted that block, then it'll tell you the finished sizes, 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch, 9 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. Or if you say wanted this one right here, this, what is it called? Because I cannot see, I have it covered with a sticky thing. Forest path, you know, it has six inch, eight inch, nine inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch. So, I mean, it has lots of inches. And then the other one I have is the new quick and easy block tool, 110 quilt blocks in five um, sizes with project ideas. So this one's a little more easier. I have tons of notes in this one because I work from this book more often than I do any other book. But this one also has notes in it as well. But this one has more notes. <clears throat> and this one is also color, but they're really small because the book is smaller. So it does have colored pictures, but they're a little on the tinier side. But it does tell you what page they're on. Can you free motion quote with your Juki? Yes, you can free motion quote with this Juki. Yep, you can do a lot. It's a straight stitch machine. You could still applique on it if you like straight stitch applique. Um, it all depends on what you like. Page 33. 33. How big do you want your 33. 32. Dutchman's puzzle right here. I need a six inch finished. So I need two and three. Three eighths inch pieces of these. How big do you want your geese? I want my geese to be um, whatever size they end up for this. Um, four and one. There it is, that four and four and one four. All right. You guys We're missed gonna... it. Just rewind it. Oh. Okay, don't lose my page. Oh. I'll lose all that. That I might lose. Okay. Okay. Four. There you go. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's not big enough. Four and a quarter. It's not going to work. Email address is in uh, all the videos at the bottom. Yep, my email address is in all of my videos. Or well, we just click on the link that I just posted. Is that going to be four and one four? four? Yep. So we're going to do blue. Is this four and one four? No, it is not. Some of my scrap pieces aren't big enough. Is this four? Yes, this is. I'm just going to cut some. I don't think I'm going to make very many of these blocks because I don't have enough fabric on the big, big pieces of fabric. Do this one. Okay. So I'm just going to cut one four and a quarter inch square from each of these fabrics. says one. Okay. Where is my cutter? There it is. So one, two, three, four and a quarter. I'm going to cut it a little oversized because cut this one. So I'm going to cut this to the right size first before I start cutting more. Straight 
this way, straighten over the sides. I'm cutting my four and one quarter inch piece in on the diagonal twice for both sides, but I'll get to that after I stack them all first. Ooh. It's a nice machine. I've heard a lot of people though complain that it is a loud machine. It is a loud machine. It's not loud when you first get it. Like the first six months, it's pretty quiet. But if you're using it all the time, like me, the machine tends to get a lot louder. But after a bath, every time I clean it, <laughs> give it a good cleaning, for about two or three hours, it's actually quieter. <laughs> and then it gets loud again. <laughs> There's no control over that loudness of the machine, unfortunately. But you can check it out on the website. And you know, obviously, you see me use mine all the time. And I've had mine going on seven years. But, yeah, I have. It doesn't go straight to it on that one. I, I didn't make a straight to it one yet. Or did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's called Yuki because Yuki PL yep. 2010Q. Yep, yep, yep. You're right. You're right. I did make one. It goes straight to the Juki. Yeah, it's the only one that does that. Yeah. Maybe the other one for Dominic King's Plus. They can check out other stuff. There yeah. we go. They have them both. If they're interested. I'm not saying there's a mess of them. Did they come in any order? Well, they were laid in there nicely. Just throw them in the box. I'll fix it later. They're all on top of each other. All right, four and one quarter for this guy. I have them all together, honey. Did I make this side four and a quarter? Yes, I did. All right, one more. I didn't mean to mess up your stuff. I'm sorry. It's fine. It happens. All right, one more four and a quarter inch to cut. With all these cuts, I should get um, two blocks, hopefully, I think. Come on, nice, there we go. Put that guy over here. And trim this up. And then we're going to cut them on the diagonal twice. And then we're going to cut. Where am I? Two and three eighths inch squares. All right, so I'm going to stack these on top of themselves. Do you need water again, Jerry? No, I'm good. I thought it would be nice to add in more blocks to this wonderful project that I'm doing, but you know. Anyway, so I'm gonna cut on the diagonal one direction and the other. And then I'll move it out of the way. Right up here for now. And my secondary color is two and three eighths. And I need 16. And I'm using scraps. Every part of this is all scraps. So I need two and three quarter. Make sure one more time. Two and three eighths. Two and three eighths. Two and one, two, three. It's the one right before the half, the notch right before the half. One, two, three. Right there and right there. Okay. Move that over there. And I should be able to get all eight cuts out of just this piece. Obviously. 
name and a block for me. Dutchman's Puzzle. And if you guys do have this book already, the new quick and easy block tool book, it's actually page 32. Well, it's page 44, block 32 of the book. Because this book actually has a misprint page in it. All right, two and three. Eight, seven, eight. Oops, wrong side. One, two, one, two, three, eight. Here's four already, just like that. And then these get cut on the diagonal once, and I need eight, so I need to do this twice. But I'm gonna get them. Two. So let's make one block first and make sure that it comes out six and a half inches or six finished all right here are my pieces here are my other pieces i only need two i need two of each color all right one two three four five six yep 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 okay all right i don't know whatever i'm talking at my butt now okay <laughs> all right let's move that over there these up here, up here, up here. We're going to take all this over here. I only need two, but I'm not even put work. And now I'm just going to sew one of these on this side and one of these on this side. So making a flying geese unit. When I do it this way, I want to line up my smaller triangle on the bottom of my bigger triangle because I want a quarter inch edge to stick out up here. So now we're going to put seam guide because I cannot sew straight for the life of me. And I'm just going to chain piece all these through. And I'm probably going to have to cut a couple more because I definitely don't have enough pieces for all this. Because I am making few extra than I needed so that I can have four colors throughout this block. Definitely trying to have fun with all these blocks that I'm making. No matter what I end up making. The sawtooth star ones I made up on my own because I don't really need a pattern for that. I made those a hundred bazillion times, but sometimes I want to change it up. Yeah, I'm gonna cut two more sets. Hold on, let's cut this two more times. Right here, two and three eighths. One. With the measurements and the squares be the same for four at a time? Two. Uh, probably. Yeah, it should be. I'm thinking about it right now. Yes, for four at a time, it would be the same then. Four and a quarter for your bigger square, and then your smaller ones would be two and three eighths. And then you would lie, lay them on the diagonal. Yeah. Fold in my fabric right there. Did you use the Starbucks Kim sent you? The Starbook from Kim? No, I have not used that yet. All right. How long have you been quilting? For seven years, pretty much. Really? It's been that long? Mm -hmm. You say that every time I say it.
I'm just sewing all these on one side. And then I'm going to come back and sew the other side on after I finger press them all. Because I don't feel like ironing. And Scott looks comfortable, so I'm not going to make him get up and iron. <laughs> I think that book, we got this block book for $14 on Amazon, like $14.99 or something for me, for like three years ago. Probably find it cheaper now. There you go. If you guys ask again, I'm going to tell you just rewind the video. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to just finger press these back and then add the opposite side. So finger press it back, add the opposite side, and this time I don't have to trim anything. I'm just going to trim away the dog ears, and that's about it. Because that is going to be what's in my way. Actually, it's not if I press it back that way. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I got mine um, used. Did we get it used or did Probably, we buy it yeah, new? Buy yeah, I think, thing. yeah, he buys the cheapest one we can find when I want a book. So it was most likely used. But it felt brand new when I got it. Now it's very used. <laughs> so now I'm just sewing these other sides on, just finger pressing them back. Finger pressing usually does the trick for me. And they do overlap, so just be aware of that. And you sew them on this way. Yeah, out of all of my books, these two I use the most. Then there are a couple other ones that have a block in them that I use because it, you know, that I've used often because it has a specific block that the books don't have, but it was in another book to make a quilt. And I just took the block from the quilt because I didn't want the quilt and how it was designed. I just wanted a block. So sometimes books come in handy. Although I'm pretty sure all of the information can be found online with free patterns all over the internet. But sometimes it's nice to just have the book and not have to keep a computer on or phone or tablet on in front of you the whole time. Sometimes it's nice to just open the book and leave it. warm in here. Better than it was last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday. We lost power, we lost power during the video. That's crazy. Yeah, I agree it's hot, but it's nothing like it was that night. Yep. Last week was scorching. It was like 106 degrees outside when we lost the power. It felt like it was 120 in the house. <laughs> it was so hot. And the funny thing is, is we keep our house at 80. So it really didn't change much. It got to like, what, 86 or something like that. It wasn't yeah. even that hot. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But it felt hotter because it gets stuffy when it's just you guys. Well, when, no, fans or anything, no fans or nothing, you know, so it gets it really stuffy. stuffy. Air moving. And that's what makes it hotter, is because there's no movement in air. And we don't lose power enough here 
to invest in any kind of like solar fans that we can keep outside and charge the little solar things for or um, battery operated fans. Not even a generator. Our neighbors, a lot of our neighbors have generators, but we don't. And I don't know. The only thing we would need it for is the refrigerator, honestly, because our stuff sat for 11 hours in the refrigerator. Could you use a dry Try what? A tri rec ruler. Um, I don't know. Does that do flying geese? I don't have one of those rulers, so I don't really know. It's just flying geese is all I'm making though, and then we're gonna make four flying geese and two. I mean, eight flying geese into a puzzle, or what they call a Dutchman's puzzle. Hence the name of the book. And look, this time I don't got to trim any extra anything off. I just need to finger press it all back. Where did you get the green rulers that you did? Those are Missouri Star rulers, and I am in no way affiliated with Missouri Star, but I love them. I don't get paid to tell you guys all about them, but these, as you can see, I use constantly. This is my five by 15 ruler, and this is a two and a half by eight inch. These are like the most grabbed because I mainly work with pre-cuts. 90% of the time I work with pre-cuts or numbers that are less than five inches. So since I had gotten these, um, they were sent to me by one of you out there. Since I had gotten these, these are pretty much all I ever use, unless I'm squaring up to something, but I usually trim my half square triangles with these first anyway, because I tend to trim them, then press them, because then they come out more accurate, I think. But yeah, I love these rulers, and they haven't even faded yet. I've used them so much. I've used these more, I think, than my other ones, and my other ones are missing lines on them because I use them so much, and these lines have not faded. They're kind of like perfect. All right, here we go. Let's press all these back and then trim off the dog ears because they're exactly the size they need to be. He answered the question about the rulers. No, they don't do those. Yeah, I, I don't know what rulers, what ruler would because I don't have it. I don't have any fancy. I do have like the to make the pineapple blocks. I do have the pineapple ruler. Um, I have the Creative Grids uh, corner clipper, which I don't ever use either. <laughs> um, what other one do I have? I have my strip tube rulers, and then I have my Dresden rulers, my layer cake. Um, uh, one. What size ruler do you find in this The 5 by 15 I use the most, this one. And then my second most used, because I cut a lot of yardage, is this one. And this is actually my favorite. This is the Quilters Select, Quilters Select Ruler. Um, it has like this non-slip stuff on it. See, I just laid it on here and it moves it. If you just lay this on here, the ruler slides over it. This one, it moves the block. So you don't like lose, you know, I don't know. You don't move your fabric. So once you lay it on the number you need it on, it won't slide. These, I want, I wish I had the money to afford these because these are quite expensive, but I would love to have it in the square versions. There's two, I would want to um, like an eight and a half to whatever size, just a square only. And I think it's the six and a half. I think they have a six and a half. And then the other one that I would want is a 12 and a half size one because I do use my 12 and a half inch um, square ruler as well. But I love that quilter select ruler out of all the rulers. I mean, I put super glue, I mean, not super glue, um, glue gun, hot glue gun on a lot of my like little rulers, but on my big rulers because i used them so much i needed to be able to like move them around in like a quick fast hurry but when i'm cutting yardage and stuff that quilter select has been the best and i do use it to trim too i just it's kind of bulky because it's the long one the six, it's the eight and a half by 24 
it's great for yardage, but not really for small blocks. And it's good for trimming quilts too, because it sticks to the quilt nicely. I'm just trimming the dog ears off as I finger press these. Can you explain why you put the hot glue on the back of the rollers? Um, so my video is super old, but if you visit Tracy at the sewing channel, I think hers is Tracy. Is it? I don't remember hers. She has one though, I think. Who is it? The sewing channel. I think I've made her one. If not, one of my moderators can add it. Tracy at the sewing channel, and she even gave me a shout out on it. Um, did the ruler that secret? That? No, it's probably not there. No, she no, did no. the ruler secret. And let me tell you, that was my original thing. And she loved it so much. She made more than one video on it <laughs> with it in it. But I used hot glue gun. And she upgraded it a little bit by using um, parchment paper and getting flat dots. And it actually works better for her. Is she on here? No, she's on. probably not. All right, here we go. Let's lay out my block. So I want two. Tracy from the sewing channel? Yep. It's just called the sewing channel. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we're going to do two this way. And we're going to do two this way and two this way. Let's see, we'll do three of these. I'm making two blocks. Like I said, I cut enough for the two blocks. Thank you, Teresa. And then that goes there. That goes there. And I didn't cut the side dog ears off. Oops. But there's my two Dutchman puzzle blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these together now right sides together and I'm going to be mindful of the quarter inch which would be to keep my point with my flying geese unit. And I think I'm just going to go without this in hopes that I can keep it an accurate quarter inch but I still have these um I still have the oh what is it called dog ears on the sides of each block. So normally I cut all of it off but this time I didn't. I am going to chain piece all of these together. Uh, I don't know who the sewing compound is. They're on there too. I just know the sewing channel. All right. Put on an actual video. Actual video. See, they're on it. Okay. Yeah. Go Eric. All right. So now I'm going to finger press these away from my point. So you can see I did not lose my flying geese point. So you see, I did not lose it. It's nice and sharp. You can see that I sewed within it. It's hard to see because I used um, tan thread or cream thread, but I did not lose my point. And I'm pressing it towards the upper flying geese. That way it's nice and flat up there. And then this one, I'm just finger pressing. I don't even remember what order I had them laying out in, in the first place. It doesn't really matter because they don't need to be exactly the same. So we're going to put this one in that one. And that one, oops, that goes this way, goes up to the top, to the right, to the bottom, and to the left. So it creates a pinwheel in the middle. So I'm gonna put these right sides together. I'm gonna put this set in first. Again, I would probably suggest cutting all these dog ears off. I did not. So they're all just gonna be hanging out in my block. And then I'm going to finger press this one to the left and finger press this one to the right. I'm going to put them right sides together because they're hooked. I can't lose the order. 
and then sew these together, nesting my center seam. And this should give me that six and a half inch block that I didn't get the first try or the second. Lining it up. I sew better with a seam guide, but hey, you know, whatever. And then I'm gonna press that. And my center didn't perfectly line up, but that's because I have too many bulky seams right here because I did not trim those away. So we're gonna see the difference. Let's trim all these away and see how better that center lays. It lays so much better, let me tell you. I know this in advance. Just gonna trim all these dog ears off. A lot of people leave them on. I've noticed that I've watched a lot of YouTube over the years and a lot of people don't cut them off. They just leave it and so keep sewing. I can't though, I don't know, it just seems bulky. That one is definitely bulky. And you can use scissors to do this too if you don't trust yourself with a rotary cutter spinning everything around this fast or you think you're gonna chop the finger. Actually, just went this way because the trash is right here. All right, so I'm gonna sew these together in a sets of two and then I'll lay them out and go from there. And again, I'm throwing things. Well, there goes me not sewing straight. I lost my point on that one. <laughs> Telling you guys, when I don't use my seam guide, mm -mm -mm, it's, it's never correct. And there's that one. This one's good. And there's that one. We turned out two seam guides this week. Right? Yep. And then there's this one. So up. My my left hand corner is up away from me. Then my right hand corner is to the right. My right hand bottom one is down facing me, and my uh, bottom one on the left side is facing the left. That creates that pinwheel in the middle. We're gonna put these right sides together. Grab the top one first. I'm gonna nest all these beautiful seams. Hopefully not lose my point. Grab the next one. The seams I'm talking about nesting are the seams right here on the diagonal, right here and right here. I'm nesting those so they're going in opposite directions of each other. And I'm gonna finger press this one to the right. And I'm gonna finger press this Where's one your guide? to the left. My magnetic guide's right here. I moved it away when I was leaving all the dog ears on. I moved it out of the way. But we're going to see how accurate I could sew without it, which is not very accurate at all. I'm telling you guys, even with this seam tape right here on my machine bed with a black, prominent black line that says quarter inch, I still can't even follow that. I don't know what it is. I just cannot sew straight. I should have named myself the not straight quilter. But then I would have got a lot more different attention. Because <laughs> I just cannot sew a straight seam for the life of me. All right. Now this center lined up way better. Is way better a word? Can I say it that way? So you can see the difference. Got rid of the dog ears. Look at that center. Didn't get rid of the dog ears. Look at that center. You can see the difference. Sloppy, not sloppy. <laughs> I think I did good. Did it come out six and a half? Oh, look at that. Yep, look at that. So it's the size I need it to be. 
Now it just needs to be pressed. And I'm going to go right here like this and go, I don't want you there. I don't want you there. These are the dog ears. I'm trimming them away with my scissors. At least to eliminate the bulk when I go to put things together because, you know, the rest of the blocks don't have them. I got rid of it on everything. That's what I get for being lazy. But all your quilts are beautiful. Yeah. Okay. They're all snipped away now. Now it's as flat as it can get. Once it gets ironed, it should be fine. It's not like these are perfect anyway, you know, because there's two different blocks here already. Where do they separate? All right. Here. So I have these, and then I have these. So they're all different colors, you can see. All different colorways. And then these are also all different colorways. So there's blues. There's reds, and there's yellows and oranges. And now these ones are even different because the backgrounds of these are big flowers. The backgrounds and or the center is white with white polka dots on these. And then these ones are more flowers, but are cream. There's no end so, to the combo. Nope. So we're going to... How many of these each do I have now? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means I need to make six more Dutchman puzzle blocks. Hmm, okay. So let's cut out. I get two for every four color cut out, and I don't have enough of the some of the colors. So we're just gonna cut two more of these. No, three more. Three more. That's what I need. These were all big enough. One, two, three, four. I don't have any more of these colors that's big enough. This one is, I guess. Which other one? I need at least four so and a quarter. One, two, three, four. Really? No. No, this is too small. Oh, this okay. is going to go in my bin of messed up stuff. These are definitely not four and a quarter. Those aren't four and a quarter. Not four and a quarter. You know what I could do? Where did that block just go? For all the smaller ones, I can just cut. Two inch by three and a half inch. And what are my little corners? Two and three eighths. that. That way I can use up some of these other colors. Let's do that. Let's take these big ones and these small ones. I need two Were the inches. Other yes. I've been working on this for a while. I don't know what I called the other videos because I kind of name everything something different. So what did I just say again? Three and three quarters. I'm measuring the seams, guys. Two inch. Let's measure all of these just to see. Three and three quarters. Okay, three and three quarters by two inches. That's what I'm gonna do. And then the two and. Yeah, we'll figure it out right now, because that way I can make multiples, different colors. So two inches tall. 
And then we're going to go to three and three quarters. Oh, I could just cut them on the diagonal like this. That would be right. And then I would get each and every single one of them out of that. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> it's thinking here. It's I can do this. Hard. The wheels are turning. So I could cut right here. And right here, there's two triangles. Go to this opposite side, line up Z ruler right there and right there. So I'm lining it up on the one, two, three, and what is that number? Three and three eighths inch on the tippy corners. And then cutting it across like that. So there's two more. I love your wording, the tippy corners. <laughs> the tippy corners. <laughs> love it. And then we're going to line, oop, don't move. We're going to line the ruler up again this way, like this, like that. Oops, it's right where it needs to be on the corner. Bam. And I could probably get one more. What do you think? Yeah. Ooh, one more right at the edge. Look at that. Dang. That worked out perfect. Okay. So we'll put that over there. I have all these lovely sets right here. So that makes flying geese with those. And then I just need the two and three eighths inch pieces. Oops, I gotta pull that one out because that one has a seam. Stack that this way, not this way. We're gonna do these two and three eighths inch pieces still, but we're gonna cut them on the diagonal. See, I'm thinking I can use my skinny strips now. <laughs> so look at this, let's see, does it work? Two of these goes on this. Oh, yep, and yep. See, mm -hmm. I got it down. So there's one block. <laughs> Here's number two block. <laughs> All right, two and three eighths. Bam, and then cut on the diagonal one time. So here's two more, just like that. And that. And then let's do it again. I have a fold in this piece. It's not very happy with me. You know, when you're trying to make the most of what you have with your scraps, I think I'm doing good. Robin must have looked them up. He said they were on the show Sundays from 7. One, yeah, I've only ever worked on these on a uh, so Sunday, so yeah, she's good for looking that up. That's yeah. awesome. Go Robin. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna make a stack up there. And this has a seam, and I'm not gonna get the right size out of that. So let's cut this color. And what did we want again? Two inches by whatever I can get on the diagonals, which works. We're just gonna make a nice straight line here. I'm gonna go to two inches. Oops. Well, said to use the angled ruler behind you. Uh, yeah, I could do that, but I don't feel like it. I just got <laughs> this right here. This works. I'm gonna set it up right here and I'm only gonna get one of these. What, are you kidding me? Look at that, right there. The most out of it, right there, and right there. Yeah, there's no way it's gonna get another one on that, huh? Nope, it's not. Okay, so I got one at least from here. Are the three triangles that make the flying geese all the same size? The triangles that are making the flying geese, yes. Are they all the same size? Yes. They're all the same size. Yeah. All right, we want this color now. We'll get however many we can out of this with a two inch strip. Because I didn't have what I needed in all those um, sizes. All right, so we're gonna line that up right there. 
and right there. Cut, cut. There's one, and we'll get a second one right here. Line that up, and there, and there. Look at that perfection. And there's two. We'll just set that aside because I can make elbow that hurt. Elbow. <laughs> Elbows. <laughs> That's what I get for cutting right here. <laughs> I'm gonna get two out of this one. Let's make a nice straight line right here. I need to make six more blocks. That's all I know. Six more blocks. Try not to hurt myself between now and six more blocks. Here. You don't have to make six more. You can make one more if you want. That's up to you. Well, I don't have to make them right now. Let's do the junior, though, because it gives me the perfect one. This is small enough. There we go. We'll just use this guy, and we're going to line it up on the not three-inch line, because, yeah. There we go. Right here. Right there. Come on. Right there. Right there. You guys notice I talk to myself when I'm lining things up? I'm like, right there. Right there I'll do. I talk to myself no matter what I'm doing. That's and there's definitely life. not enough there. <laughs> Move. All right. What color do I not have now? Let's put this yellow one. Need a two inch. Oh, if you guys are wondering, the line that I'm using is floral menor menor menagerie. How do you say this, Scotty? M e n a g e r i e menagerie. That's what it sounds like. Uh, right there. Yeah, menagerie. Okay, so this line is called. Floral Menagerie from In the Beginning Fabrics. This is 2017, these lines here. And then this one was from In the Beginning Fabrics, but the name of it was different. It was actually called something else, but it, it went with the same, it's the same fabric company, so that's why I decided to use it. Yeah, this one's Painted Patchwork. By Sue Zapkin for cloth work. So it was a different one. I don't know. It matches to me. I liked it. So I figured they can go together because it's floral. The fabrics feel exactly the same. So it was something similar. Okay. We're going to cut a nice straight cut here. I always forget that sometimes some of you guys ask after the live stream, ooh, what is that fabric line you're using? Well, most of the time I don't know because I don't pay attention to this stuff. But every now and then, I do know. <laughs> Bernie is going to send you more scraps. Oh, yeah. Bernie is the one that sent me the scraps from this in the first place, except for some of the extras I've added since. Yeah. My, my original scrap pile came from Bernie, though. All right. Well, let's do this guy. Yep, I use all my scraps. Whether it takes me five bazillion years to do it or not, I still use them. So far, I've been working on this for a while, according to my YouTube channel. <laughs> so I'm just lining it up and making a cut. Lining it up and making the cut. But I'm still using the other size from the whatchamacallit, the, the other square size. I'm still using that size. This is just different because I don't have a ton of four and a quarter inch pieces. I okay. just trimmed Here's it down. I'm going to set that over there, and let's see, have I done this pretty blue yet? No, I have not. 
I'm making this where I can do six more blocks if you guys haven't noticed. So there's like. Two, three. That's one block. So that's about two blocks worth. And that three blocks worth almost. Yeah. I'm having fun with it though. Little by little over time, I will, you know, finish all this. <laughs> Someday. Line it up, make the cut. Turn the ruler, make the cut. Turn the ruler, make the cut. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my goodness. No use for empty thread spools. Uh, use for empty thread spools. You could roll your um, binding onto it. That's about all I would use it for, honestly. Besides, if you have um, little kids, like if you have grandkids or something, and they're really little and you want to entertain them, you can take the empty thread spools. I don't have any in here, but you can take an empty thread spool and. You can glue the centerpiece together and turn them into little goggles. Yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> That's what they were used for. All right, so there's two there. Different color. We have used not this color yet. Oh. And green, I haven't used the green yet. I'm gonna make two cuts in this one. one. Come on. And no, I did not change my blade because I haven't actually been in this room doing anything because I've been trying to catch up on my long arm jobs. So I actually have not been in here sewing. So I haven't changed my blade. Have you ever made a cathedral rag quilt? A cathedral window rag quilt? No, I have not. Um, let me get that here. And that is the end of that one right there. Okay. As long as it lands beyond the pace, that's all that matters. Okay. One and two. One. Not enough, but I'm going to take the salvages off. All right, green. Did I do bright pink yet? No, I did not. So that's next. Where did you get your rotary cutter? My rotary cutter is a Martelli rotary cutter. Um, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on a lot of quilt shops sell it. I don't know if that quarter shop sells it or not, but I do know Sewing Machines Plus sells it. And it's the same price as Amazon or anywhere else. So, and that I do have an affiliate link for. Yep, they sell it. Yep, they sell it. I don't know what the price is because I haven't checked the price, but I do know that they sell it because I actually saw it in my browsing one day. So I know they have it. Is there a good first? Um, Y seams, first block. Well, the only block I ever do with Y seams is an eight pointed star, and that's definitely not a beginner block. But you can try, um, what's the oh my gosh, I can't think of what it's called Rubik's Cube looking one. What is that called? There's a word for it, probably in my book. Rubik's Cube, 
right? It, it, it looks like a Rubik's Cube block. Um, I did two tumbling blocks. Tumbling blocks can be done Y seam or not Y seam. You can do it two different ways. I did only two tumbling block quilts ever, and I've never touched since. And one was small. It was like 26 by 30 inches or something like that. It was a very small wall hanging size because I got so frustrated with the Y seam. I have never made one since. So those. What size are the strips you're setting? Two inch. And, uh, like table. My and table? Yeah. My table is uh, enormous. It's it 36 inches wide. By 72 inches long. It's it's like almost the size, if a little bit more, and it'd be the size of a twin size bed frame. It's a bit, it's a big table, and it's 30 something or yeah, it's 30 something inches tall. I don't know what. 28 inches tall. It's for short people like me. It's the short person desk. We took those legs off of it. That's why it used to have little pins. Yeah, it a ton. And this is a very, very, very heavy, heavy duty desk. Like super heavy duty. The strips are two inches, you said? Yep. Okay. Just cutting two inch strips. I'm trying to cut enough to where I can make six more blocks. If I have extra, it's okay. Why? Because. I can add it towards the next set of whatever blocks I make from all these scraps. I'm trying to make a bunch of different blocks. And so far, it looks like I'm making eight of each style. I'm probably going to find another one that has um, flying geese and make a different flying geese style block. I still have to go and cut all the corner add-ons. More. All right. I guess I could start cutting the other ones. That's enough color, right? I'm mostly yellow. Have yeah. you ever got so frustrated that you threw the project away? Nope. I've never thrown fabric away. If anything else out of it, or I still I don't get that frustrated I try not to because fabric is really expensive and if you're on a budget like I am like a super duper budget then you don't want to waste it and a lot of a lot of you out there have sent me fabric which allows me to make a lot of these small projects like this and come up with things and be creative but when I go out and buy the fabric by myself I don't let myself get frustrated um with scraps I've wasted quite a few scraps but i still use them i've never thrown it away because this stuff costs way too much money for it to go in the trash like and there's people that have wanted to throw their quilts away and then they send them to me and i figure out what to do with it and put it together you know it just depends on what they've messed up and i've also a few of you have reached out to me and i've talked you through um putting the finishing you know finishing the quilt instead of making what you were making i've given people ideas on how to change it up and make something else so i definitely try to help not waste fabric because again a lot of us are on budgets i mean i, I have to admit a lot of us are 65 plus not us and me included but there is a lot of you out there that are 65 plus so a lot of you are retired and on social security which doesn't pay all the bills. So you can barely afford a certain amount of fabric every month. So I get it. I get it. You got quite frustrated with the yeah. paper quilt over there, but you never threw it away. You kept nope. trucking away at it. Yep, there's quite a few times I've had, I, I've gotten frustrated, but I never throw it away. Uh, and it, the one time I did get super frustrated and I started all over again was the Mariner's Compass Quilt because the book was wrong. Yeah, all the, the measurements, it was, the quilt that one of my neighbors bought from me that I won in a quilt show, all the measurements in the book, all of them were wrong. The only thing that was correct was the center circle once it was pieced together. Everything else, wrong. So I had to just 
kind of make it up as I go from then on. So I did take those original pieces that I screwed up and I actually right here have the rest. So all the pieces that were the wrong size for that quilt, little by little, I have been turning these already made pieces, take eight of them and making quilts with them. And I've had two already. So now I have enough for two more quilts two more big Lone Stars out of all these pieces. So I just need more background fabric because the Lone Stars do take a lot of background fabric and I didn't have enough, but all of those pieces that I spent hours sewing together, all these ended up the wrong size and the quilt would have never went together properly. So I saved it all and little by little, I've made two now and I need to make two more quilts, Lone Star quilts out of those leftovers because I'm not going to waste it and I'm not going to throw it away just because the book was wrong. All right. Have you ever done a hexagon block? Hexagon block? Yes, I actually have a hexi quilt, my way hexi quilt, hanging in my bedroom on a quilt ladder. Any hints for them? Uh, hexi quilts are, depending on how you do it, it can be challenging, but the way I did mine was not. The way I did mine was super easy. Two and three eighths. Two. Give me a second so I can cut this or I'm going to forget this darn number like for the fifth time. <laughs> All right, two and three eighths. But yes, I've made a hexagon quilt in a kind of different way than most of you guys probably have thought about making one. All right, now let's turn it this way and cut. Are you going to incorporate the four patches? On your desk. Yep, I'm going to incorporate the four patches and I also have other little tiny pieces like this bag right here is full of hourglasses. So I have hourglass blocks in here that are one color. Oops. I have hourglass blocks of another color as well as I have a whole stack right here. All this, all this right here is all half square triangles. So the half square triangles and I think the four patches are going to go together into a block. Then I have some plain two inch squares, I think, left in here. And then I also have some dash blocks. And if they don't end up in this quilt, they'll end up in the, another quilt that's similar in color. I've done that several times, too, where I've had lots of leftover pieces and made two quilts. From the leftovers, I made a queen size and two lap size once out of, if you guys don't remember my churn dash quilt, I did a um, time lapse on that. Uh, the churn dash quilt, I had so many leftovers, I made two more quilts out of that. Do you have a video on the hexagon quilt? No, I never made a video on that. That was before I started YouTube. But I've showed it on my YouTube channel. I just didn't make a video because it was before I was on making videos. It's actually really cool, though. I could probably replicate it, but I got so many things going on right now that I am not starting anything. That's why I'm doing this today, because I have so many things going on that I cannot start something else. Because some of it is actually all of it is jobs except for one thing and that's going to be the sew along which you guys will find out what it is very shortly all right let's put these come on Two, four. okay all four with that all four with that just a couple more how are you feeling I'm fine I didn't get a long enough nap, so I kind of have a slight headache, but it doesn't help that my hair is up in a ponytail, and ponytails make my head hurt. It down. Uh, it's already a disaster, so there's no putting it down. Yeah. 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 No, it's not a migraine. It's just a headache, headache. Okay. Like tension headache. Two. Ooh, look at that. I get one more. Right there. On the diagonal. There, that goes to that pile, that goes to that pile. Slice these. That one, that one. 
How many more do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Oh, Ooh, I hate when that happens. Okay, I'm still going to use them. All right, one, two, three, four. Four more. We stack this nicely. Come on. You know, sometimes fabrics, you know, you can tap it like you can paper and it'll stack really nice. And then there's other fabrics that don't and they make a super big mess. And yes, I need to change my blade. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. All right, two and three eighths. What I'm cutting. I'm not quite up to turn it. Okay. What is it? How long have I been on? One more, and then I'm going to start sewing some of this. The rest of it's all pre cut so I can do it later. Patchwork quilt design and coloring book. Yeah. I'll have to look it up later. All right, let's make using stack of four colors. This one like that. There we go. Then let's make one, two, three. Green. And I still need to cut more, but I'll do that later. And then this color, this color, yellow and red. Yep. I need to cut more. So I need to cut two more blocks. All right. Same guide. And I'm going to just chain piece some of these through. <coughs> Um, which one? I forgot. Huh? Well, I put it away, so. Okay, so you can put it away and then rip it out. I know which one. Let me go grab it. I'm going to grab something and we are going to have a quick auction on my channel today. So if you are interested and you don't know what an auction is, it is where the highest bidder wins the quilt. And then it gets shipped off to them. Sorry, I'm trying to pull it out of the quilt bin which is so stacked, so full. All right. So if you guys have never joined for an auction, I'm going to hold up the quilt and show you the quilt. And then you guys can bid on it with a starting price. Yep, that's the one. All right, so I'm going to make sure that we can even see this on the screen by doing this and updating that so that way it's ready and available. Okay, so 
the quilt that I have available to auction off, since you guys are all here, everybody wants a chance <laughs> to own one of my quilts. It's called Topple. If you guys don't remember it, I show it on plenty of my videos. It is called Topple, and it is 74 by 88, so it's a lap twin. Okay. And this was a pattern that I showed you guys how to do. And we're going to start the bidding off at $30 only because that will be what covers the shipping to start. How much is it on Etsy? I don't know. So here's what the top half looks like. It's rooster fabric, guys. Rooster fabric. And then... Here is the bottom half. So it's it's kind of super busy. It's the one of the busiest quilts I've ever made, honestly. <laughs> the back is a stripe with blue trim around it. Do a bid 50, then the bid 55, reach bid 60. So it's a, it's a purple, a green, and a cream and a green it's two different color greens and a cream um, stripe it is quilted in large flowers i don't know if you guys can see that on the screen my screen is not fully caught up but it is quilted in large flowers it does 320 dollars on etsy and then it has so a tag a right here Melinda went to 75 Teresa went to 85. All right, and then it has a tag that I did when I used to only monogram. It says design piece and quilted by Tiffany Graff Quilting Designs. Topple. This was from 2019. This is why I, you know, am auctioning it off because it is an older quilt. And it's been in my cupboard for a while and hasn't sold on the Etsy shop. So here's the front again. It's all sorts of purples, yellows, blues, greens. <laughs> but there are roosters. There's roosters in this. I'm telling you guys, it is cute. I don't know why it, nobody ever wanted this quilt. And it's got little bees and roosters. And it's got yellow fabrics. There's the roosters. Here's a rooster right here. And he went to 130. Teresa went to 150. Teresa, I don't think she wants it. And then, let's see, where's the rest of the roosters? Here's a rooster right here. Like, look at him. He's so adorable. I'm trying not to drop all my pieces. But look at this rooster. This fabric was adorable. It just was the wrong pattern for this fabric because it's really busy. But it's cute. And it's been in the closet for too long. So it's being auctioned just for you guys. So that everybody gets a chance to own a quilt made by me. We do this every now and then. So there it is. It's hard to see in full today, guys, because I'm not, you know, we're not on the right screen. What is it at? Jennifer is at 160. Jennifer is at 160. Well, there it is. It's busy. The front of it has black around the edge because it goes with the front, obviously. And then the back has the top and bottom and sides because I didn't have enough of this stripe to go on the whole entire back. Sheila's at 162. Sheila is at 162. Let me pick up this mess that I am now creating here with all of my little pieces. Sandra, oh, Jean M and Sandra are both at 175. All right, so either Jean uh, or I Sandra can, needs to go up because it's can't do it to you both. at 175. One of you has to make your mind up or drop out. I can't, you can't sell it to you both. And look, it's being cuddled by me in the extreme heat of my sewing room. <laughs> Sandra went to 180. Oh, that's for this. That goes over there. Tell Teresa to come out. Hey, wasn't she supposed to come visit? Teresa, come out here and make one with you. <laughs> Teresa went so to like 160. In case you guys didn't know, this one definitely has a pattern. It's called Topple. T O P P L E. Like that game. Do you guys see it right here? Remember that? Oops. Sorry for hitting the mic. Yes, that, I remember. That game where it's on a stand and it's a triangle thing and you stack the little blocks and the who next player stacks their colors until one side tips and whoever's colors fall off. Well, that was called topple. I loved that game as a kid. That was in the 80s. 
Um, so the quilt reminded me of that game so much that I named the blocks Topple. <laughs> well, Sandra's at 180. Sandra is at 180. Sheila went up to 176, but we're already over 180. Oh, oh no, Sheila, Sheila went up to 181. 181. She, she bids like I'd pay just a dollar more. <laughs> that, that would be me. <laughs> a dollar. So while the bidding continues, because I have a feeling it's going to go on for another minute, I'm just going to toss this over here. You guys can kind of see it right here on the edge. And I'm going to sew a couple more of these pieces on here. Just so that way they're sewn on. Oh, we got Sandra Bear at yep. 190. I'm going to cut these dog ears off while I work too, because this is like annoying. All right, Sandra Bear at 190. Still at 190. Has it sat at 190 for more than a minute? Hasn't been a minute since it sat. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> It'll be in the bidding at 7 o'clock. 6.51. 190. Okay, Scotty. It's at 190. It's beautiful, whoever gets it. I always liked it, but I don't own any twin size beds. And you know how many quilts I have lying around my house? <laughs> he says I have, I'm keeping too many. But you know that when you make a quilt, you're like, oh, this is beautiful. Well, some are designated for sale quilts only though. So if you didn't know, I do sell my quilts because that's what helps pay for me to have all the supplies I need to make more quilts and make you guys videos. Still at 190? Still at 190? Yep. All right. Still at 190. I think I'm going to call it. Oh, you said go to one. I wasn't going to wait that long. Okay, these don't look like the size the other ones did. These don't look like the right size. Did I do something wrong now? They do not look like the right size. La, 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 la. Nope, it's shorter by a quarter inch. What did I cut wrong? A well, quarter inch shy. Maybe we, yep. Maybe we made a mistake. Yep. See, Olivia went up to 200. That's okay. I'm going to put, we're at $200 now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I don't know, because they're all cut already. It's okay. It's a good block. It's not bad. Just because it's the wrong size, it could get used for something else. No, because they won't match being the wrong size. They won't go together. See, they'll be over. They won't fit together properly. So all these are going to be made to go something else. What was wrong? Maybe it needed to be two and a quarter tall. No, that's two inches from the top of that piece to the bottom of that piece is two inches. So that was the right size, but these are not the right size. I'm just going to continue making them and make something else with them. Or I could add like a little piece of sashing in between them. Why? Because, you know, it's my quilt and I can do whatever I want with it. <laughs> but I'm still keep doing it. Where are we at? 200 still? Yep. Olivia. Olivia still at 200. I could stitch them with an eighth of an inch seam, but I definitely don't want to stitch them with an eighth of an inch seam. I'm just going to keep sewing them, and I think I'm just going to piece them together using a one inch sashing in the middle of a different color that's not the four colors that are in it. 
And then that will take it to the size that it needs to be. I think. Will it? I don't know. It should. Yeah. We'll see. Because it's definitely not going to be the correct size. <sighs> An awesome movie. I have not. I've seen previews for that, but I have not seen it yet. Um, the quilt is listed at three twenty on Etsy. Just saying. <laughs> yep, that's what it's listed at. And that's still pretty cheap for a quilt, but it's it's been Olivia too long. Gonna get it. All right, where are we at? Olivia is at 200. And if you're just joining, there is a quilt for auction right now. It's the topple quilt. Sitting right there, the highest bid so far is at 200. Good deal tonight. Yes. Yes, indeedy. All right. One more. One more we're going to see what I can do with the um, pieces since they're not the right size. Yeah, if you guys go over to Etsy, you can see the quilt in full. I know. It's called Topple. But this way, you guys don't have to pay the Etsy fees because Etsy charges. Yeah, Etsy charges both you and me. So this keeps you guys from paying Etsy fees as well and saves you money all at the same time. So you guys will pay a lot more if you buy it on Etsy. Then if it's for 320, because Etsy will charge you a fee. And they'll take money from us. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see what I can do with this while it's still. Oh, Olivia. Uh, Olivia, you don't have to do that. You're you don't have to do that. You're still at 200, Olivia. I'm not going to rip you off and charge you an extra 50 bucks, darling. No. You're still at 200. You're good. No one has outbid you yet. What time is it there? It's two minutes to seven. Two minutes to seven now. We ain't no scam artists. Yep, he needs his more than five seconds of fame. Look at this guy. It's so weird that he never comes in here unless the both of us are in here. Although the couple days ago when I was in here, he came running in like a bat out of hell. I don't know what the heck he was doing, but he came running in, ran over there to that side of the desk, sniffed something, and then bolted right back out and didn't come in the rest of the time I was in here. And all I was doing was organizing because I was trying to get all my long arm jobs done. <clears throat> yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, We're in them. Arizona, in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Oh, <laughs> now I see it. It just popped up on my screen. All right, we're going to see what I can do here because this is definitely not the right size when these are sewn together. Now that cat don't need more food. He gets nope. enough. He definitely don't need more food. He All 16 a, pounds of him. He gets a half a cup of food a day and two servings. He gets a quarter cup in the morning and a quarter cup at night. Yep. He's on a, a special diet. He's actually lost weight. He's doing good. Yep. 
All right. Where is it at now, Scotty? We're at 7 o'clock. Anybody else? It looks like we're at 200 Olivia. for Olivia. Yep, she's at 200. And that's what it's probably going to be. So 200 for Olivia going once. 200 for Olivia going twice. Olivia, you have won the quilt at $200. Just email us. Just send me an email and we can get situated on how to pay and get this shipped off to you. It's a beautiful quilt. You're going to love it. All right. Let's see what I can do to fix this. So they need to be they're not the right size they're not exactly square is the word i'm looking for so it's three and a half and that's not three and a half well actually they can be the same size i just need to take an eighth of an inch off the top that's it but they're not going to be the size i need the blocks to be we're going to see right now but we're going to take an eighth of an inch off the top Let's see. Oop, this way. Yep, eighth and inch off the top. Okay, I threw the ruler. Where did I throw it? Wait a minute. Okay, I got that one. I'm going to cut this one. All right, so just shoot me an email, Olivia, and we'll get that done as soon as I'm off a of live stream. And I don't know, is there mail tomorrow? Do we have September, even though today's September 11th, we don't have that for September 11th yet, huh? Where they don't do mail. I think that will go tomorrow. Tomorrow's yeah, tomorrow. it should go tomorrow. Olivia says, it's the first time I have done this. I want this for my son. He's a nurse, works at the hospital. He oh, will love it. Wow. Thanks. That's awesome. That's fantastic. He will love it. All right. Up, over, down. All right, let's see what size this comes out. Because if anything, I can just trim off an eighth of an inch off the top of every single one of them when I go to put these together. And then I'll still have my block. Because it comes out six and a half inches unfinished. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so I'm going to press this one this way. And press this one that way. And that way I can save all these pieces, even though they were cut not the right size. The what? Uh, any brand that's inexpensive, that's what brand I prefer. <laughs> I like my Missouri Star rulers, though, and I my Quilter Select rulers. All right, is this six and a half? Oh, 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 oh. Six and a half. Look at that. So I just need to trim an eighth of an inch off the top of every single one, and I'll still have my Dutchman's puzzle blocks. I thought they were fine geese. They, this is a flying geese block right here. Oh, okay. And put so together like this a creates puzzle. a Dutchman's puzzle, yes. Okay. So I still have my block. Well, look at that. So I just have to trim an eighth of an inch off the top. Once I put them together, I can do that like on every single one of them. So I don't have to let any of this go to waste. Yay. <laughs> and can you tell that they were done differently? No, you can't. Look at that. You can't see the difference. Perfect. That's what I call. Keep on going because it'll come out in the end. All right. So I made three. The rest I'll make later. I'm totally done for the day. I do need to fold this up. It's, it's gathering all the threads that were on the floor. It does have black binding. So Olivia, I will de-thread this thing before I pack it up for you because it's covered in floor threads now. You guys know how that works with the quilts. So 
Don't think about black quilts, too, or dark quilts. They tend to pick up all the quilts, all the thread from making the quilts off the floor. Okay, so that's now out of my way. All right. Yeah, every now and then when a quilt sits too long on Etsy, we'll pull it and um, auction it off, guys. So no worries. Y'all get a chance to get quilts made by me. Even if they're small wall hangings, I have those too. Um, but some of them haven't been listed yet because the only thing that's on Etsy is big quilts. Nothing little right now. All right. So that's that. That was my Dutchman's puzzle block to just need to make um five more so that i can have eight of these to go with my star blocks and my other star block so i have two different star blocks and then my dutchman's puzzle blocks so far and they all have different background fabric so i'm going to just keep swapping up with what's left of my scraps um because i don't have very much left of this one it looks like a big piece but there's not much here so i don't have much of that left and then all these are my biggest pieces of this and then i did find some more white on white with polka dots so i have some of that but not a lot and then i found this cactus print um that i just used as a backing for something else someone else's um it's a micro miller fabric cactus garden and I thought you know what when I go to do whatever I do these could also be part of the fabrics because cactus and flowers go together because some cactus bloom flowers so I figured this can go with it because it goes with this and they all have that same cream tone in the background Granny squares, granny squares, granny squares. I'm trying to think. Granny squares is on point squares. Yes, I have. So, yes. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to make eight of whatever blocks I can and just keep making eight blocks of every whatever I can make with all this until all of my scraps are used up. And even the things that are like this that I made earlier, my four at a time flying geese, which I just pretty much showed you how to do. Um, those, all of my four patches will get sewn together probably with half square triangles um, and like pinwheel style blocks maybe. And I mean, I have other blocks that are in here, just pinwheel ones, but I think these went out because I didn't have enough pieces because it's the right size, but I didn't have enough of the fabric to keep going. So I didn't continue making those, but I definitely have just tons of these little tiny scraps in here. So I can piece a ton of these together and create blocks with these as well. So I have more cut off pieces to make more with. Um, again, just lots of little scraps that I'm working with, as well as the bag of more pieces here. Oops, and I'm dumping them out. So again, I can just take a bunch of these and sew them together and make blocks out of these. As long as all my blocks come out the same size, even if I have to add sashing or something within the block, you know, with one of these fabrics, I will figure it out and everything should go good. But I'm gonna get a bunch more of these Dutchman puzzle blocks done and then move on to the next which who knows when i'll finally do that because again i work on this maybe twice a year <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> since i worked on it last so that's all i got for you guys today i'll close that blade before i cut myself does anybody have any questions or anything and one more time before i get off the book that i worked yeah, from again, today really is like called that. the new quick and easy block tool with 110 quilt blocks and five sizes with project ideas packed with hints, tips, tricks, simple cutting charts, and helpful references. The book, uh, the price they say it's supposed to be for is $17.95, but I'm pretty sure you can find it cheaper on Amazon or eBay 
or used book sites. This is by CNT Publishing. Um, I'm no way sponsored by them. It's a spiral bound book, which makes it easy so you can see the whole page. And the other book that I didn't work from. You're on the floor, I showed it. Oh, was the Around the Block with Judy Hopkins, that book as well. Um, this one has 200 rotary cut blocks in six sizes. So, but this book right here actually has sizes for pre-cuts. So in one of the sections in the beginning, it says, Charm squares, fat quarters, and jelly rolls and layer cake squares. So it also has a, quite a few little blocks that you can make from charms, fat quarters, layer cakes, and jelly rolls. So this, this was that fat quarter and yardage and everything friendly. It just depends on how you want your scraps left over. So there's that. Thank you guys all for hanging out today. Um, thank you for the purchasing the quilt. Who was that again? Olivia. Olivia. Thank you for that. Thank you all of you for hanging out. And I will see you guys in my next video. And don't forget, since it's 9-11, to go hug somebody that was a first responder because they deserve it. Bye. Bye.